Forgive me for this question. What's the stupidest way to write a screenplay? Well, you're talking to someone who's a big fan of the outline, so I would say, and not that the person who does it is stupid. But right, those are my words, not yours. Yeah. Your words. My words. Aaron. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, send the letters and cards. Yeah, it'll be. Um, yeah. They know the email. It would be just to sit down and say, I got an idea, a half baked idea that really wasn't thought out. And you can do what you want, which is fine. But I just think, you know, and you may find there's a scene in there that's great and brilliant, but a cohesive through line and all that, it takes time. It takes, it takes work. You know, um, this isn't something that just spills out. Some people say, I can just spill a script out in, in, in a week. Well, that's fantastic. And, and we'll see how good it is. And maybe you can do that. Everybody's got their own way. But uh, there are a lot of pitfalls. In, in that, in, in doing that, you know, with the story and things aren't working. And, and it's just, it's, I hate when I sit there and I write something and I know it's just bad. I, the best times, and you know, we all go through that, but the best times are where it's, I'm, it's like this weird uh, channeling and I can almost, I can see it in my mind's eye and that's going onto the page and I feel good about it because it's like I watched it, I already watched it in the theater. But it hasn't existed yet, except in my head. Going to so it's in a way. When when it's really good, it feels like you're channeling it, and when it's bad, there's something. The channel is not; those waves are not coming through. Not to be like you know, oh, you know, your own new age, up. yeah, dial up versus sure, you know. your own. You're you're tapping into your your creative um, thing, your well, whatever you want to call it, where you go. And it's, 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 you know, the signal's not, and you just write down a scene, you're like, that's gonna have to be rewritten. You know, imagine, now you probably, a person probably wouldn't think that just burning through a script. Oh, this is great. Oh, you know, but you, you, when it's just bad when you're like, that has, oh my God, it's garbage. It's terrible. Like a placeholder instead of the real scene. You know, yeah, okay, well, this is just, this is the bad version, as everyone says. You know, you get that note from people say, "Well, um, here's the bad version," and they tell you it, and you're like, "That's really not that bad." But you know, no, 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 I don't want you to do that. But here's an example of what not to do. You know, the bad version, as as you hear in Hollywood a lot. And I'm like, "Are you ever going to tell me the good version?" And they said, "No, that's for you to figure out." <laughs> like, oh, you're right. You're right. I because I'm the writer. Right. Throw me a lifeline here. You know. <laughs> I'm drowning because I got the bad version that's the real bad version. Is this Sunset Boulevard? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do, is it almost similar to the people that in college said, I don't have to study, I just show up for tests? In a way. And there's some that can. I've never met any. But um, yeah, I especially especially with the I think with the um, with the odds. That there's so many scripts out there, and so many good scripts too, that I think a lot of times writers don't may not see the mountain that they're climbing every day, or, or what they're you know you're not only up against your own competing with yourself you know to be a better writer next time and next time and learn like you should, uh, but also what's actually out there if you want to work in the marketplace type of thing. And I know when you say that, it, when I say that, it sounds very uh, non-romantic. You know, but it's a business. You know, so why not put your best foot forward in creating that? You know, unless you have no, um, if you have a good day job and, and there's no pressure, you know, to, to that this script has to sell, you know, to make your rent or your mortgage payment, and you're just like, yeah, I'll dabble in it. But dabbling takes time as well, and so, you know, while you're dabbling, uh, another person is working 24 hours a day and learning the craft and really, you know, pass, they want it more than anything else. And uh, it can be a hobby, it's just fine, you know, but I think there are ways to, to approach a career or a writing career in a certain way. And people can try it however they want. But the, this, you're back to your original question, is just to go, I think I have an idea and not really Whoa, you know, hold on a second, you know. What, what are you doing here with this idea? You know, every idea is a kernel of a premise that builds now, but do we have enough? Is, you know, type of thing. 
and not to second guess like what's selling. If it's really a passion idea you wanna write, absolutely, go, you know, you must do it. But you also, um, yeah. And what about people that say, well, I don't wanna write for TV or I don't wanna write a movie that doesn't have A-list talent in it and they, they stomp on something because it's not Star Wars. Sure. What do you say to that? They want to be a screenwriter. Mm -hmm. They want to work in the industry. Mm -hmm. But, oh, no, that's not, that's not 48 hours or you know, I'll pick more There's movie. some <laughs> movie. Sorry. Let me pick something in the last few decades. Um, uh, no, I know what you mean. Right, okay. It's not, it's... But you're saying they stomp on the, the, the smaller ideas? Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I read a lot of... Uh, scripts that are big, big ideas, you know, big Hollywood ideas, which is fantastic. But the real odds of an unknown, uncredited writer, it, it could happen, it does once in a great, not as much as it used to in the past, you know. Selling that thing, that's the only thing they've written because intellectual property, IP is all the, the rage, you know, it's already been a book, it's been, you know, a comic book. It's been it's been a sequel, a prequel. You know, Star Wars is a perfect example. We just we just manufacture it until the end, and then we come up with a new series, right? That's all done. We'll veer off on this one, and we'll take that character and we'll make a whole series on that one. Um, that's a bigger that you're trying to you're trying to hit a home run out of the park, which we all, we all do all the time. But you're I think you're also shrinking your your possibility because. They already have the A-list writers out there, you know, who are filling those jobs. And how does how do they get there? Well, I don't know. Everybody has their own journey. If you trace, um, I was saying, a, a writer uh, who's a big TV person now and features started on um, Xena Princess Warrior. Now people would look down and go, Xena, that's a ridiculous, uh, you know, blah blah blah. Everybody starts somewhere. Sure. And was it his heart's desire to work on that show forever? No. But that was a, st a stepping ground. Everybody has that stepping ground. You just don't, my experience and the people I've known, you just don't start out at the top. You know, you take the job and you go, yeah, okay, it's not my perfect thing, but I'll, now I'll do, you know, it's a step by step process. So um, I would say in that way, don't step on those little ideas because those are the ones that can be made. You're taking a bigger gamble writing this hundred million dollar script that's locked into that budget. You know, can't be made for less. So then you say, well, where can it be made? I don't know. There's four studios that could possibly do this. Let's say they all pass. Where are you going to go with the script? Somebody's going to shell out a hundred million dollars of their own money. I mean, you know what I mean. So the smaller idea, um, smaller in scope, meaning you know we're not out to save the universe. The universe could be your own life. You know your your little universe uh, could actually be made five million dollars two, you know it's not it's not um, glamorous like like a lot of writers. Well, I'll just sell my script for millions of dollars and and you think that your life changes overnight. You still have the same problems. You still have the same relationship. You still have you're still a person. It's just a it's a job. You know what I mean? It's sort of and I hate to sort of shrink it down to that, but. But it's like, oh, a screenwriter, yeah. I used to think the same way too in film school. Oh my God. You know, you read the trades, you're like, oh, these, I'm gonna live the life. Live the life, yeah. You're gonna be living the life at two in the morning writing the screenplay. That's what it is, it's work, it's not glamor. There's times when uh, you're forgotten about at a screening. Happened. Where they thank everybody, yeah, bling, bang, and then they thank the craft service and then they go, let's run the film. And you're sitting with the stars and they look at you and you're mortified. You're like, <laughs> and then afterwards, of course, it was it was just a it was an oversight. And at the party, it was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Have another martini, you know. I'll call you. Yeah. Well, it wasn't that bad. Oh, but it okay. was just, you know what I mean? It's not all gonna be mm -hmm. uh, and if you're in it for that fame and fortune and fanfare, not the writer. I mean, we made inroads a little more than the past, but it's still, you know, you're still the writer. I mean, it sounds, it's the most, one of the most important people because that's where, without the scripts, as they say, there's nothing, right? But, 
you know, that's why you should like try to be a hyphenate writer producer, you know, writer director or something like that. Eventually, I mean, or start out as that. That's your that's your choice, you know, that's your career direction. But just the writer, it's you know, it's an interesting road. <laughs>